Okay, ready to start. Let's find just a quick seated and get grounded for a second. So comfortable cross-legged seat. Um, if you feel like you need to ground, hands facing down. If you feel like you need to receive, palms facing up. Um, and just gently let the eyelids close, gazing down at the floor. And taking a nice deep, even breath in through the nose. And a passive open mouth exhale. And just kind of feel in, does your body need to move, like rotating the torso around? How does that feel? Making sure that you're doing it evenly on either side. Good, again, just re being really mindful, sipping the air in. Maybe doing equal counts breathing. Like sipping the air in, pausing and holding. And then releasing the breath. Pausing and holding. And then can you lengthen that out a little bit? Adding an extra breath, extra count, or two or three. And visualize the breath coming in from the crown of the head. And as you're holding the breath in, holding the light in the body, Move it to the areas of the body that are requiring a little extra assistance today. Like it's circling it like a little ball around the area and the breath is expanding the area and then you're just moving it out. And then starting again from the crown, breathing in, breathing down, pausing and holding. Moving it out. Let's do four more just like that. Good, and from here, with eyes remaining closed, just slowly come up onto the knees, let the knees be wide, finding child's pose. Um, but make it somewhat of a movement or active child's pose. So for me right now, I'm just shifting my hips side to side, I'm on my forearms. Just letting the inner thighs open up a little bit. And movements are so slow. Like if you're moving your hips side to side, so you're actually feeling all the areas of the inner thigh and the upper hamstring. Just unlock a little bit. And the movements are with your breath. And so if you're hitting any areas that are like, okay, that's a little tight or that's a little sore, breathe into that space again and maybe pause and hold it there. And then shift again to the other side. So just rocking a little bit side to side. And for now, just let the belly be soft. Don't worry about 
pulling in that Uddiyana Bandha unless you need that support for your low back. But it's almost like we're doing a prone yogi squat right now. And it's kind of a nice little massage too on the intestinal tract and that's why I don't want you to really engage the low belly but massage it as you're moving from side to side. So moving and kind of little compressions on the ascending, transverse and descending colon. So you may start to gurgle a little bit <laughs> through the intestinal tract because you're just moving things around a little bit. And let's just do four more breaths here. And eyes are still closed because I want you to do that internal exploration of the body. Notice how the low back is feeling as you're rocking side to side. One more long, even breath. Fill the lungs, pause and hold. Good, and then when you're ready for the exhale, lift right up into your cat spine. So it's a big breath in and then exhale it out. And then inhale, shift back onto forearms and child's pose. And then exhale it out. Two more of those. And one more. Staying up in cat pose and then move into cow. Knees are wide though. Cat and cow, just again with wide knees. And this time you're feeling into every vertebrae in the spine. And when you get up into that full cat spine, it's almost like you're just giving the glutes a nice little squeeze and then a release as you move back into cow. And I just want to get that area warm in the upper hamstring and the glute. So a little squeeze when you get fully up into your cat spine and then release and let it stretch out. Let's do two more. And one more. And knees are still wide. Walk the hands forward a little bit more and just do these big rolls. Like you're pulling back, shifting forward almost as far as a modified plank. Listening to the knees. If knees are too wide, bring them in a little bit more. Right, if this is uncomfortable on the inside of the knees. And then just switch the direction that you're rotating. But we're doing it really slowly, so as you're pulling back, you're going inner thigh, shifting the hips over, inner thigh, stretch, straightening. Pulling back, feel the inner thigh on the left side, right side, coming all the way around. Good. One more time in that direction. And then coming back into tabletop pose, drawing knees under hips, hands under shoulders, and then slowly just step out, right foot, have it curled under and just press out through the heel and give a good stretch through the calf. 
just rocking yourself back and forth a little bit. And then the other side, extend the left leg long, toes are curled under, pressing down on the mat, pressing through the heel. Good. Coming all the way out into full on plank, could be from the knees if that feels better. Setting yourself up and then hips lift high into downward facing dog. Bending the knees to begin with. And then just pedal it out. Letting the head hang heavy. Pointer fingers are facing the top of the mat. The other fingers are spread out evenly from there. Pressing down through the L of the hand. And then externally rotating the upper arms. So biceps are facing forward, triceps are facing back. And you just feel the rhomboids turning on and the lats turning on. Good, and then find a little bit of stillness in your downward facing dog. And then slowly inhaling right leg high. Gently bend the knee and open the hip. I got a really nice pop out of that one. And then square it off, but just extend it high. So it's a fairly intense stretch on the calf. And feel free if you want to bend the knee, if that feels better. And then gently ease knee to nose. And then ease it high again. And then slowly into low lunge. Coming from hands onto fists where your palms are facing each other. And then gently lift the hips and lower them. You certainly don't have to straighten that front leg at all. Lifting to your capacity right now, just easing, lifting and lowering. And if it feels better, you can certainly come down to your knee instead and shift forward and back. Good. So moving in breath and then exhale. Let's do four more of those. Nice, and then dropping down to the knee if you're not there already, walking the right foot up and out for more of a runner's lunge. Shifting the hips forward, just rocking a little bit again so we're getting the psoas on the left side. Adductors and hamstring on the right. And then long, even breath in, and on the exhale, take a little twist. Think about on the twist that we're broadening and opening the chest. So that right shoulder comes back. Think of the collarbones just broadening and separating. And staying as you are, or if you want to grab onto the back foot, get a little deeper stretch through the chest and through the left quadricep. back to center. Walking the right foot back in, take a breath in, and pull back into a half split. Ardha Hanumanasana. So again, just kind of listening to how things are feeling, flexing the foot and then pointing it if you'd like, and notice the hamstring releasing and then the hamstring lengthening.
Nice. Shift it forward back into your low lunge. You know what I want to do? One more thing. I want to do a little front body opening. So reaching the arms up and overhead. Just find that little steeple grip. Now start to fire up that Uddiyana Bandha. We're going to lift up, lengthen, and then take a little baby back bend and follow with bent elbows. And reaching fingertips high, release the hands, interlace the thumbs behind you. So do right under left, take a shoulder shrug, open up through the chest, and then pull the fingers apart, pull the hands apart. Right, so we're doing this beautiful kind of isometric stretch, but really opening up through the chest. And then release little shoulder shrugs, ground the hands, Front foot meets the back. Pause and just breathe into your high plank pose. Let's take like 20 seconds in plank. So it could be from, or from toes or from knees. Just find where you feel most stable. Just a little strengthening through the core and firing up of the core a little bit before we get into standing. Making sure that you're not locking those elbows out. Right, using the strength of the muscles not just lock joints. Let's hold here for five, and four, three, two, shift the weight forward on one, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana, and find your up dog or cobra and just pause and breathe into it a little bit. And then lifting into your downward facing dog. Settling back in, have the knees bent if you'd like. Pedal it out again. Shifting weight and gaze. So this is going to be kind of just a feel-good class. Lifting left leg high, bend the knee, open the hip. Where you're just doing some nice exploration into how things are feeling, we'll do some strengthening through that, some releasing through that, but most of all, really good deep breathing. All right, gently square the hips off, pause and hold. If it's too intense, bend the knee as much as you need to on the standing leg. Easy knee to nose. Good, and bringing it high and slowly finding low lunge. Coming from hands to fists, Lifting and lowering, and remember you could be down on the back knee as well, and pulling the hips back and straightening. Just find what feels best to you. Maybe it's a little bit of both. And let's do four more of that. Again, moving with a very slow and steady breath. Keeping eyes closed as best you can just to really explore how things are feeling. And then after your fourth breath, everything's in your own timing. Drop down to the back knee if you're not there already. Walk the left foot up and out towards the corner of the mat for runner's lunge. And just begin again by rocking on the back knee. And I'm still on my fists versus on my, my hands or my palms. If you want to save your wrists just a little bit. And just listening what feels good, what feels like it needs a little more attention. And when you're ready, full breath in, get the spine nice and long, and then rotating from the belly through the chest, opening up and broadening through the chest area. Left shoulder draws back and down, right shoulder opens up.
pausing and staying as you are, or if you want to grab for your back foot, that's an option too. Just continuing to open up through the chest. I did a whole lot of push-ups a couple days ago, and so my pectorals are really tight right now. Good, a couple more breaths, really even, really slow, just beautiful breathing. Good, and then releasing, coming back to the center. Walk the left foot in, full breath in, and then pull the hips back, flexing the toes, dorsiflex back towards your nose. Point and flex if that's comfortable for you. But again, with eyes closed, you get to just explore, wow, that feels really good, or wow, that really doesn't. And I don't think avoiding what doesn't feel good is necessarily the route to go. It's exploring it with safety, and that's how the breath really supports you because your breath will tell you that's too far, that's too much. Good. Shifting forward into lunge, sweeping the arms up and overhead, get that steeple grip, but get the opposite grip this time. It's the one usually that feels a little more awkward. Reaching fingertips high, bellies drawn in, open baby back bend, bend the elbows to follow. So elbows reaching to the sky, triceps are stretching. Good, fingertips reach high again. Release the hands behind you. Other thumb is underneath. Take a shoulder shrug, opening up through the chest, pulling the hands apart. And release the hands. Good. Little shoulder shrugs, and then reground the hands. Front foot's going to meet the back. Pause and hold. Let's take 20 seconds in our plank again. Could care less if you're on toes or if you're on knees. Find what feels good in your body today. A long, even breathing in. Feel free if you want to just kind of shift yourself forward and back a little bit. I do that sometimes just to pass the time <laughs> rather than just a static plank pose. And it also is really nice, you know, for all the stabilizers, if you're shifting a little bit back and forth, firing all those little muscles. All right, let's do five more, and four, and three, and two. Shifting forward, pin the elbows in, lower down, chaturanga. You certainly could come all the way down to the mat taking cobra, or staying up and finding upward facing dog. Easing into downward facing dog. Long breath in. Even breath out. Find stability in your down dog and just pause. This is such a powerful posture. The entire back side of the body gets a nice stretch here. Really beautiful strengthening. One more breath. Rolling up onto ten toes, bend the knees, belly back towards the thighs. Ease yourself to the top of the mat. Inhale, find a nice halfway lift. And then exhale, bend the knees, connect belly to thighs and fold. So bellies on the thighs, and then just let the torso and then the crown of the head follow. And interlace hands in front of you, behind you. Maybe you want to widen your stance a little bit more and just rock yourself side to side.
Good, and if they're in front of you, maybe take that chest expansion. If they're behind you, maybe just let, interlace them in front. Just switch. And again, bend the knees as much as you need to to make this just a really yummy stretch. And as you get warmer, you can straighten the legs more. Making sure that your gaze is between the knees so the cervical spine is nice and long. And then release hands to the mat. Inhaling to a halfway lift. Good long spine. And then a forward fold. And then reverse your swan dive all the way into Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Hands come to heart center, Samastitahi. Find the groundedness between the four corners of the feet. Guide that life force up through the middle of the foot, through the calf, through the legs. Zipping it up into that Mula Bandha, the Uddiyana Bandha, lifting nice and tall shoulders. Come up, back, and down. Sunamaskar A. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, let's take cactus arms. And then slowly lead with the chest as you move into a bent knee forward fold. And then open up into a halfway lift. This is really slow movements. Ground the hands, stepping back in flow. Take a very slow lowering, slow chaturanga. And a really expansive inhale, whether it's up dog or cobra. And a surrendering exhale, downward facing dog. Sipping the air in, full breath. Exhale, feel yourself grounding down to the earth. Hands and feet equally. One more time. Fill the lungs. Again, reground. Rolling up on ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Take a minute there and walk yourself top of the mat. Knees are bent. Have a halfway lift. Long spine. Very surrendering exhale, forward fold. Again, nice halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, forward fold. Ground through the feet. Inhale, sweep it all the way up into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Exhale, hands back to heart center. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Exhale, find the cactus arms. Heart is leading as you bend the knees and slowly fold. Arms come down to the mat. Fingertips reach the mat. Open, halfway lift, knees are bent. Ground the hands, step back. Take an extra breath if you need to. Slow, slow, lowering Chaturanga Dandasana. Finding upward facing dog or cobra. Again, fill the lungs. And then release out into a really beautiful exhale. As you move into downward facing dog, pause and breathe. Inhale, you feel a little bit of flight. Exhale, you feel yourself regrounding to the earth. Again, inhale, just a little bit of flight. Exhale, rooting down. Inhale, roll up onto all ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Exhale, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, knees are bent. Exhale, fold. Again, inhale. Unravel the spine out through the crown of the head. Halfway lift. Exhale, belly melts. The rest of the torso melts as well. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Sip the air in. Arms up and overhead. Exhale, open the chest, cactus arms, slowly begin to fold, belly to thighs, fingertips to the mat. Inhale, unravel the spine, tailbone out through the crown of the head. Exhale, ground the hands, very slow moving, slow flowing. 
Expansive breath in. Surrendering breath out, downward facing dog. Inhale, finds a little bit of flight. Exhale, grounds you back to the earth. Inhale, takes the tension off. Exhale, finds your stability. Inhale, rolling up onto ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. And exhale, bring it to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, bent knees. Inhale, unravel the spine, tailbone to crown of the head. Exhale, fold forward, feet are hip distance. Inhale, find your chair pose, Utkatasana. And then exhale, come to rise, squeeze the glutes. Good, lower back down into chair pose. Coming back up, squeeze the glutes. Good, lowering down and squeeze. Just very slowly, notice how things are feeling. Find your own rhythm, find your own depth of chair pose, but continue to think, I'm reaching for the chair behind me, my weight is going into my heels but the balls of my feet are still rooted down evenly. Let's do four more of those. And three more. Very slowly, sip the air in, squeeze and breathe it out. One more. Come all the way to rise, sweep the hands up and overhead. There, and then find the cactus arms, bend the knees. Move into your forward fold. Open halfway lift. Belly meets the thighs, fold forward. Open halfway lift. Ground the hands, step back, flow through your vinyasa. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Grounding breath in. Even breath out. Inhaling left leg high. Slowly bend the knee, open the hip. Squaring it off. Gently bringing knee to nose. Inhale, guiding it high again. Taking your time as you move into low lunge. Grounding the feet coming up on the fingertips. Stabilize first. Right, so like you're on a pair of cross country skis, pulling everything into the midline and slowly stacking the spine as you come into full crescent. Relax the shoulders. Firming the glutes, right? Get those fired up. Now think of pulling the right hip gently back and then firing up the hamstring until you kind of feel it catch and the glute is supporting all of that. Nice stable hips. Back heel is pressing to the back wall, back knee to the sky. Reaching fingertips high, inhale, open to a baby back bend and exhale, finding your airplane arms. Inhale, open to your warrior two. Good, and exhale, just pause and breathe here. Letting the knee track out. Good. Let's inhale, reverse our warrior. Get some nice side body stretching. Maintaining the bend in the front knee and then finding an extended side angle. And then inhale, reverse your warrior. And then exhale, extended side angle. So find your own rhythm here. Let's do that two more times. And one more. Ending in an extended side angle. Long and deep, even breath in. 
even breath out. Beautiful, one more breath. Take an inhale, straightening the front leg. And then exhale, just exploring your triangle pose, Trikonasana. Think of the hips. Right hip is pulling back, left hip is pulling forward. So for so many years we've been trained in knocking the hip to the sky and the other one up into the hip, like you're in between two panes of glass. You don't gain the stability that way, you just end up generally overstretching. So when you're pulling right hip back up into the socket, the left hip's actually gonna kind of round down a little bit more towards the floor, right? So hips are not open like this. It's kind of a halfway between. And now I've got really beautiful stability to open up my arms. Pausing and breathing. Good, let's get a bend in that knee. Sweep it up into star, heels tick in, toes tick out. And slowly come down to your goddess pose. Whatever that looks like. So it could be a shortened goddess. It could be a real deep goddess. Externally rotate the thighs. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to lift a little and then lower a little. And just feel into hamstrings, glutes, quadriceps. Where are they firing and kicking in? And how are they supporting you? Knees tracking out towards the pinky toes. If you can, eyes are closed, just as you're slowly lifting and lowering. Feeling the muscles fire. Are they firing evenly? Is there discomfort anywhere? And if so, how can you adjust ever so slightly? Maybe you're not going as deep. And then just slowly pause and hold where you feel most comfortable. One more breath. Slowly straighten the legs. Bring the feet parallel or even slightly pigeon-toed. Using a block if you need to, if it's too intense to move into prasarita. We're first just going to bring hands to the hip flexors, so lifting up and over the hands. And just noticing, okay, is everything feeling all right? Is there any catching? Use the block here if you need one. And remember when we were in child's pose and we were shifting our hips when we were rotating around. Actually, we were into those kind of barrel rolls. Well, we did the same thing in child's pose too. So consider that as well, where you're just pressing right inner thigh towards the left, coming to center. Left inner thigh pressing towards right. Think of a long line of energy from the tailbone out through the crown of the head. And just gently opening and awakening the inner thighs. Making sure outside edge of the feet, the knife side, is rooting down. Inside arch is gently lifting. Beautiful. All right, now bring the hips center and then slowly bring the right hand towards the left foot and then left hand to the sky. Little twist. And then walking back to center and left hand slowly going to walk over towards the right foot. 
Right hand comes to the sky, little twist. Little deeper stretch on that right leg. Good, and slowly coming back to center. Toe heel the feet in, just a little bit. Toes are coming out, heels are coming in, sink into your yogi squat. Use a block if you need to, bolster if you need to. Close the eyes and just notice how it feels. And again, remember in child's pose when I just said, let your belly be soft, let your belly just ease open here. Um, I also, what feels good to me, is to use my forearms and kind of press my thighs out, my knees out towards my pinky toe. Not collapsing into the chest, making sure that the chest and heart space is nice and open. But you decide if full yogi squat, sinking sitting bones down feels better to you. I do a little bit of both. If wrists are fatigued at all, you can put one fist into the hand and then switch. If you're feeling like you want some strengthening right now, you can certainly go into crow pose if you'd rather. Let's take three more breaths. Good, from here. Gently straightening the legs, toe heel the feet out again, and we're slowly going to walk to low lunge to the top of the mat again. And then left foot's going to come up and meet the right. Feet are hip distance again, inhale, find a halfway lift. Bending the knees or not, maybe it's feeling better and you can straighten them a little bit more, come into that fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in this time, yes, bend the knees like you're moving into chair. Inhale, sweep it all the way up, moving into Tadasana, squeeze the glutes. And exhale, lower back into your chair pose. Find your depth and inhale, lift, squeeze the glutes. Exhale, lower down. Find your own rhythm here. We'll do eight more of these. Beautiful. Remember, you're looking for the chair behind you, so knees are over ankles, not over toes. I have three more. I don't know where you're at. Two more. One more, and then rise all the way up, sweeping arms up and overhead, inhale. Exhale, cactus arms, start to bend the knees, connect belly to thighs, fingertips down to the mat. Open halfway, long spine. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift, ground the hands, step back. Slow and steady, chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. Downward facing dog, get a grounding breath in. Inhaling left leg, bend the knee, open the hip. Gently square it off. Knee comes to nose. Bring it high again. Finding low lunge, coming up onto fingertips, stabilize through the feet. On the inhale, drawing everything into the pelvis, stacking the spine, lifting up and overhead. <sighs> so, 
left hip shifts back again. So you can almost feel those thighs touching. Right, fire up the hamstring. And then just until you kind of feel it catch and the glutes are kicking in as well. Back heel presses to the back wall, back knee to the sky. Nice. Inhale, arms up. Finding that baby back bend. Exhale, airplane arms. Inhale, opening. Warrior two, and I'm going to turn around so I'm facing you. And you warrior two. Breathing in and breathing out. Good, let's inhale, reverse our warrior. And then exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse our warrior. And exhale, extended side angle. Find your rhythm. One more. Extended side angle, pause and hold. Breathing in, breathing out. And inhale, straighten the front leg. Left hip pulls back, right hip just draws a little bit forward. Tick tock the arms and find triangle pose, a very stable triangle pose. So it's not about flexibility through the inner thigh, through the hamstring, it's about stability through the pelvis. So again, I'm not between two panes of glass. My hips are not opening like that. They're actually squaring a little bit more towards the mat. So right hip is squaring a little bit down versus opening up. Good, breathing in, breathing out. And get a bend in the knee, coming up into star, and then sinking down into goddess. And lifting up, nice squeeze, external rotation, and lowering down, finding your range of motion. You can actually kind of feel the muscles firing if you want to grab onto your hips a little bit. Right? See what's activating here and communicating if there's any discomfort communicating to your body how can you adjust to make it feel better let's do four more also communicating how strong you are right continually communicating to your body telling your body you're doing a beautiful job all right, let's sink down and do just a little more strengthening. If you want more, lift the heels or lift one at a time, right? I'm taking a gentler class today, so I'm just going to stay rooted down, heels rooted down, feeling nice, and at the same time very active. Three more breaths. You've got this. One more. Straighten the legs. Ah, bring the feet parallel. Hands come to the hip flexors. Inhale, lifting up, and then exhale, folding. Let's just go to a halfway fold. Notice how it feels again. Use the block if you need to. Bend the knees if you need to. Right? You may want to shorten the stance a little bit. Forearms can come onto the thighs, right, with knees bent and just kind of straightening and playing around to what feels best to you. Feet are parallel with the outside of the mat or pigeon toed. And if you want to play around again a little bit with the inner thigh stretching, Maybe you need to get a little upper body opening this time. 
And you want to ease into Prasarita with the chest expansion options. Find your way. Let's take three more breaths wherever you're at. Good. If you have that chest expansion, bring the hands down to the mat again. Coming to a halfway lift. Tall heel the feet, a little bit more in. Heels tick in, toes tick out, yogi squat. Second opportunity for this. And again, if you want more strengthening, feel free to take crow pose. If you want to take an inversion, this is a great time for that too. Um, if you're going into headstand or forearm stand, just making sure that you do not kick up, that you're using the strength of your core to lift you into the pose. Use a block if you need to, if you want more support in yogi squat. Close the eyes again and just notice how are things feeling in your beautiful body right now. Chest is open. This is really good on the digestive tract as well, yogi squat. This is such a natural way for the body to sit. When you think of birthing babies, um, or you know, my daughters have been to Thailand and they've got the squatty potties, and that makes just perfect sense to me. Let's take about three more breaths. Remember, it could be on a block where your hips are higher. Doesn't make any difference. Just find again a position that you can breathe in. And from here, we're gently just going to shift back and then bring the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana. Feel free again if you want to sit on a blanket just to give you a little bit of a lift. So in Baddha Konasana, um, we're going to inch the sitting bones as close as we can to the heels and then we'll slowly spread it out a little bit more. But starting here, hands grab onto the balls of the feet, take a breath in, and on the exhale it's like you're opening a book. So there's a nice little stretch through the feet as well. Right? and through the ankles, like you're opening a book and you're slowly just shifting yourself forward into a little fold. If forearms or elbows can reach to the calves or thighs, inner thighs, feel free to use them to just ease them open a little bit without forcing, but just playing around. And don't worry about getting the forehead down to the toes or to the floor by any means. I'd rather have a nice safe back here, an even roundedness to the spine. Right, so something more like this than like this, with chin to chest. Keep things open through the chest still here.
And taking three more breaths here. And after three breaths, lifting up, walking the feet out into more of a diamond shape. If you need to roll out the ankles a little bit, if that was a little intense on the ankles, feel free to straighten the legs and roll them out. And when you're ready, again, feet walk out a little bit, diamond shape to the knees, or, and lifting up nice and tall, like you're lifting up and over the sits bones and coming into a fold. And this is just a, such a beautiful stretch. Um, if you have a block, you can certainly put it right on your feet and let the forehead rest there, or a blanket or a bolster. This one, as long as you have a nice little even rounding to the spine, you can certainly surrender your forehead down towards the feet. And allow the belly to just be soft. Three more breaths. Good and gentle release. Extending left leg long. Bringing right foot to the inner thigh, setting up for Janu Shasana. Beautiful. So lifting up on the sitting bones, nice and long. There's just a little bit of a twist, belly towards the left knee. Toes are flexed back, right? So we're shortening the top side of the leg so we can lengthen the back side. If it feels better, feel free to bend the knee, put a bolster under the knee if you'd like. Just like our standing forward folds and just connecting belly to thigh. I would rather see that than see this with the spine, right? I would much rather see a nice straight back, knee bent, belly connected to thigh, and then let the forehead rest. So find your way. Lengthen leg is still very active. So you're actually pressing out through the heel if you have a straight leg, toes back towards the nose. Let's get the inner thigh here. So, going up on fingertips, lift the hips and let the foot lead, left foot leads until you have a 90 degree bend to the inner thigh. <laughs> I'm gonna turn, because you can't see me. 90 degree bend to the inner thigh, or a 90 degree angle, right? And now my torso is gonna turn towards the bent knee, and I'm gonna reach my right hand high to the sky, full breath. And then exhale, just following with that side body stretch. Nice deep inner thigh stretch. You can certainly reach the other hand down, grabbing onto the big toe if that's available. If it's not, no worries. 
You could use a strap, hooking it around the foot and just finding that side body bend to inner thigh stretch. Couple more breaths. And then gentle release, ground the right hand. Lift the hips high, get a nice front body opening. Release it back down. Pulling the left hip back again. So hips are now parallel with the back of the mat. Grounding right foot to the inner thigh. It could stay here, it could cross over. You could bend both knees if you'd like. I just want to make sure that sitting bones are equally grounded. All right, so sitting up tall, stacking the spine, sitting bones reaching down evenly. So you're grounding down while you're lifting up. Take an inhale and on the exhale, just start to hug the thigh. Bring the belly through and keep hugging the thigh. Bring the shoulders through, keep hugging the thigh, and then ground back hand along right where the tailbone comes down in to the mat. And let the gaze follow if that feels okay on the cervical spine. And then release, a little counter twist. Go right back to the center. Uncross the legs, extend them both long and just give them a nice little shake. Let the muscles soften up. Notice how things are feeling. Nice, and now left foot's gonna come into the inner thigh. Right leg is gonna be long, could be bent Lifting up like you're lifting up and over the sitting bone. So if you want to sit on a blanket, that kind of helps tip things forward nicely as well. So lifting up tall, belly connects, foot is flexed. Feel free if you want to stay here. If belly's connected to the thigh, then you have the freedom to for sure let the forehead rest. So find your range of motion again. Little bitty twist of bringing belly down towards the thigh. Let's take three more breaths. And gentle release. I'm going to shift again to the other side. So hips are parallel. Now we're going to lift up. Let the right foot lead until you're open into a 90 degree angle of the inner thighs. Torso is going to turn towards the bent knee. Left hand reaches high, full breath, and then exhale. Little side body stretch, inner thigh stretch. This side for me is much tighter. So take your time and just notice. And 
and then gentle release. Left hand grounds, hips lift high, reach it up and back, and then lower it down. Good, square the hips off again so it's parallel with the back of the mat. Grounding the left foot to the inner thigh. You could be here, you could cross the foot over the thigh here, or you could bend both knees. I just want to make sure again that sitting bones are evenly planted. Sitting up tall, hug the thigh, right hand around the left thigh, belly comes through. Good, get some length, hug the thigh again, shoulders come through. One more time, deep breath in, get some length, and then finish with the gaze if that feels okay on the cervical spine. Good, release, inhale, center, and then exhale, little counter twist. And back to the center again. Extend the legs long. Give them a good shake. Perfect. All right, scooch yourself so you've got room. Slowly make your way all the way down onto the mat. Bring the knees into the chest. Just rock yourself a little bit from side to side, massaging out the spine. You can hang on to both knees or you can let left leg go long as we move into supine twist. Full breath in and on the exhale, guide the right knee across the body or both knees again. Shoulders are grounded evenly. Slowly gazing out to the right fingertips. back to center, give them a squeeze, maybe do little circles with them, little compressions. And then we'll switch sides. So if it's both knees, take an inhale and lower them both over to the right. Otherwise, release the right knee, hold on to the left, inhale. And then exhale, guide it over the body. Left hand reaches long, gazing towards the left fingertips. And release. Have both knees come into the chest. Little circles again with the knees. Gently guiding forehead, forehead up to the knees, pressing shins into forearms, full breath in, and open mouth, exhale into your final resting posture, Shavasana.
and slowly begin to lengthen out our breath. Filling the lungs to capacity and then just open up, exhale. Maybe brushing thumbs over fingertips or wiggling your toes. Just telling your body it's perfect and it's beautiful and thank you so much for showing up. And when you feel ready in your own time, rolling onto your side, using your arm as a pillow. Thought of gratitude before you move into your seated pose. And then coming up again in your own time. Comfortable cross-legged seat. Prayer hands at heart center, Anjali Mudra. Guiding light and love from the heart center to the third eye center. May you have peace in your thoughts. Prayer hands to your lips, may you have peace in your words. Prayer hands back to your heart, peace in your heart and your actions, bowing forward to seal in our practice. Namaste, beauties. Thank you so much for joining me today. Mm -hmm.